we are going to explain why imaginary number is so important. For example, electrical engineer use that often. Without it, it's almost impossible to do the circuit analysis. That I explained to you in this short video why and how the imaginary number is used. Okay. Uh, let's start with the basic. These are the resistor. You know resistors, and this color code shows color coding. You know first two significant digit, and the multipliers like ten times. This X is here, and this is like a tolerance. How accurate the uh, uh, resistors made. Okay, those resistor component. Uh, act for direct current and alternate current in the same way. There is a Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the basic of circuit analysis. Voltage equals current times resistor, resistance. Okay. For example, 10 volt and the current 2 amp. Then it's a 5 ohms. Now, what is AC? AC is like a sine wave signal, right? So V voltage is 10 sine omega t and the omega is a frequency. Okay. For our system, uh, most of nations use 50 to uh, 60 hertz for alternate current. And current is 2 sine omega t. So resistor, the resistance is 5 ohm. Okay. That's simple. Now, when we deal with a different component like capacitor, we don't have Ohm's law. So we use J. In electric engineers, the imaginary number they use J, not I. The reason? Well, it's like engineers' mentality. I is tiny and get lost or confused we want to make sure indicate very clearly this imaginary number so use J not I okay with J we still want to establish Ohm's law and we can electrical engineer found out that is possible so we can analyze the circuit with a capacitor on it the capacitor in DC doesn't make much sense because we you apply the voltage, no current flow. Well, transient current flow, and after that it becomes zero, right? And capacity, uh, capacitance is the fallad, is a micro fallad uh, kind of measure. But AC capacitor makes sense. The reason is if you apply the voltage say A is a uh, amplitude and the sine omega T then dv dt is going to be omega A sine omega T plus phase shift here so this is a phase shift okay this phase oh, oh yeah I forgot to explain to you uh, current of the capacitor is C dV dt. It's become derivative function of the voltage. So we have to take a derivative. You take a derivative of sine function, it's going to have a phase shift with omega. This phase shift in complex plane, you multiply j, that means it's moved here. And this is going to be pi over 2. So the J can express the phase shift in the math. Okay? So it's going to be this equation is condensed into J omega V. Using this, we have Ohm's law. V equal 1 over J omega C I. Well, imagine what? Voltage is an imaginary number? Well, it's J signify the phase shift in the complex plane. That's what it is. Okay? Uh, 
when you divide by j it goes here other way around right so this can be like a register in the ohms row so we call that z z is is called impedance it's a more generalized term of the register the resistance is impedance okay uh, 1 over z is called reactance so there's a name for that but whatever we use ohm's row we can use ohm's row for capacitor now we come to the inductor it's the same problem happen this doesn't make sense in DC because the voltage across inductor is zero and we use Henry right the, we want to use Ohm's law somehow with a J can we do that let's try it in the AC when current is sine wave the voltage of inductor will be V equal L D I D T so we have to take a derivatives I okay so it's going to be same way the phase shift j omega i so v equals j omega l i and this is impedance again so again we can use ohm's law so what's happened is when electrical engineers do the circuit analysis say you have a resistor inductors capacitors and stuff and alternate current voltage source v so this v is sine wave uh, when you learn this in physics it's become like this right you like that it's going to give you a lot of headache you have an integral you have a derivative well, it looks awful but now if it's a sine wave we can replace that with this right then it's become impedance become much simpler you can immediately analyze a circuit for example say you want to find the max of absolute value of z that means the when you know the impedance become highest value okay absolute value of z is given by this as you know you take a derivative by omega then you can easily get this equation this is resonance frequency okay so this kind of analysis can be done easily with just j is magical imaginary number so we don't have to go through the math we use in the physics derivative integral all the mixture in the circuit suppose this component has like 20 of them in a circuit diagram it's going to be terrible you don't know how to analyze it but it all can be done by just single ohms law with impedance that's the power of imaginary number I hope you understand the importance of learning imaginary number so uh, please check out other videos uh, I hope you enjoy this and thank you for watching